Hi, I'm David Carey. I had the great honor to serve as the president of Hearst Magazines, which is the world's largest publisher of monthly magazines. And this is my office where I spend way too much time. We are 10 years, I think, almost to the week that the first iPhones arrived in 2007. And there was a life before and life after. This is not just true for the media business, but for all businesses. Interesting stats, you know, 76% um, of people sleep with their phones in their bed or on their nightstand. 5% actually sleep with their phones in their hands. A recent survey of young millennials um, said that 35% would give up sex in lieu of giving up their phone for three months. Traffic accidents are on the rise because of distracted driving. Everything is a quick hit. Again, it's that Pavlovian kind of quick response. You post something and you watch it obsessively to see one like, two like, four likes, 10 likes. You use that as a validation. Golf participation rounds are down because what used to maybe be seen as a benefit of spending four and a half hours with a colleague, a friend, now that seems an awful long time to, to be off your devices. I think that this notion of tennis and skiing and golf all declining in participation rates is really scary. If you look at the classic patterns of addiction, this is it. Now, as a media company, we can't sit here and say, kind of, woe is us. We have to figure it out. Boy, this is one of my favorite spaces in all of the Hearst Tower. Right now, I'm seated in the Good Housekeeping dining room. And the Hearst Tower is really a metaphor for the media business today. We hollowed out the interior of this landmark building and built this gleaming 44-story skyscraper. This is the nerve center that connects us to all the global markets where we operate our media businesses. Magazines appeal very much to the inner aspirational nature of people all over the world. I didn't know I needed a new watch, but this Cartier watch is pretty great. Today, you have to do it across every platform imaginable. And so we put in place a brand new strategy. We call it months to moments, where we had to significantly boost the amount of content we produce. It had to be of the moment, what people were thinking about right now. I think this is incumbent upon everyone who's devoted to the art of storytelling, is to be mindful of this kind of concept of thinking fast and slow. Where do you tell stories with real nuance and depth? And where does it have to be just quick as you can possibly be? It used to be you have to have our physical content near you, and that's no longer the case. And so if there's a great piece that runs in Good Housekeeping or Esquire, and you hear about it, now you can find it instantly. That's all positive. You know, our audiences as a result have never been larger. I think all of this obsession and all of this time spent is really a great gift to media companies if you can figure out how to take advantage of it. People, you know, always have to be used to, to change and to new opportunity. And so we sit here today and we scratch our heads uh, at the crazy consumer behavior and all the obsession. But uh, keep in mind that the rate of change uh, only accelerates. Fully autonomous driving is right around the corner, which only creates a huge new media consumption opportunity for everybody. You know, there'll be a moment we'll harken back and think, God, I only wish it was 2017, because the thing seems so simple then, when in reality, it's anything but.